Good day everyone. My name is Patrick Marahan and today we will have a short discussion about determinants and its relevance in game developing. So without further ado, let's start. What are determinants? Determinants are mathematical objects that are used to analyze and solve systems of linear equations. It is also the scalar value calculated from a given square matrix. This scalar value is the area for a 2 by 2 matrix and volume for a 3 by 3 matrix. Determinants can also be described as the scaling factor for the transformation matrix. Let us consider 2 by 2 matrix. To get the determinant, we can use the technique called basket method. To do this, we first draw a left-handed diagonal like so. Then, we multiply the values in the diagonal. We will do the same for the right-handed diagonal, but we set the product to negative. Then, we add all the products of the diagonals to get the determinant. Now, let's consider a 3 by 3 matrix. To be able to use the basket method, we rewrite the first two columns to the right of the matrix like this. Then, we do the same process. Take note that, the, that we change the sign for right-handed diagonals. So, first term, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then, we get the sum of the terms to get the determinant. Now that you know how to calculate determinants, let's proceed to its application in game developing. Okay guys, now we have a tile. And a quick run through our code is we declare our tile and we name, as, we name it as 3D OBJ. Then we declare the tiles in C frame here. C frame equals 3D OBJ dot C frame. And that C frame is equivalent to this. A 4 by 3 matrix with 4 by 3 matrix with a position vector here at the top and a 3 by 3 transformation matrix which we are interested in. Now I kept the position vector at 0, 0, 0 so it won't change in our object. Then we declare our transform matrix here. The next step is we multiply our tiles original C frame oops, here to our transform matrix here. Then we run a print function to check if our code run, run successfully. Now, as you notice, this is an identity matrix. When I run the code, the code should run, but our object, or in this case, our tile, should not transform. So let's see. As you can see, guys, the code run, but our tile did not transform or move or um, it did not change basically. Then we try our next transform matrix. We can see clearly that the Z, uh, Z dimension here is zero, while all the other dimensions are non-zero. To clarify, this is the X dimension, the Y dimension, and the Z dimension. And the first row is the first vector Second row is the second vector, and this is the third vector. Now, if we calculate this, the, tip, the, the determinant is equivalent to zero. So let's see what happens. So as we can see, the tile disappeared. Okay, let's run the next code. Now, if we calculate this, the determinant is zero. But the values are the elements inside the matrix are all non-zero. So let's try what will happen. So it became a 2D object because as I said before, the, deter uh, the determinant in a 3 by 3 matrix is equivalent to the volume. And since the, det uh, the determinant is zero, there is no volume. But because it still have non-zero vectors, it won't disappear completely.
Now let's try our next code. Now this code is a regular transform. There are no zero elements and there is a positive value in the determinant here, I think. I think it's positive. So let's run. And we can see that the tile change in orientation. Now let's try the last code or the last transform matrix. We can see here that um, the principal diagonal, uh, we only have a positive value in, in the principal diagonal in the y dimension. Now, if we compute the determinant of this, we should get negative one. So let's see what will happen if the, the determinant is negative. So our tile flip. We can see that vehicle is now under the tile. Oops, we're too far. The vehicle is now under the tile. And because it's um, the, the determinant is negative one, we have a weird volume on our tile. If you can see it, guys, we have a very weird volume. And that ends our discussion for the transformation matrix. We will now proceed its application on the scaling matrix. Now we have a cube object. A quick run through our code. And we have we have declared our cube in this line of code. After declaring, we get the mass of the cube in this line of code. This will make sense later. Next, we declare our scaling matrix here, which is just a compact version of our scaling matrix here. Then we multiply the size of the cube by our scaling matrix, and we get the new mass after. Then we'll divide the new mass by the old mass, and the result will be the scaling factor, which should be equal to the determinant of our scaling matrix here. Now, the reasons why I use the mass is because the density is constant. Our code changes the size of the cube, which changes the mass, but not the density. The next reason is because it's much more convenient. When I use the size to calculate the scaling factor, which is the ideal method because we're checking the scaling factor in volume, I need to declare three vectors, x, y, and z, for the original cube and another three for the scaled up cube. With mass, I only need two, one for the original and one for the scaled. Going back to the topic, we can see here that the determinant of, mat of the matrix is four. So the scaling factor, our result here, should be equal to four. So let's run it. And the scaling factor is equal to four. That ends our discussion. Thank you guys and stay safe.